everybody welcome back to my channel and a another tutorial today I'm gonna sew along with you the strumpet wallet by seems legit thank you Tori for allowing me to make this tutorial um this was a, a really fun make now this is completely domestic machine friendly but do keep in mind that is all based on your fabrics um, there are a few things that I made when I made this that I made it a little tougher on myself than I had to. Um, I explain how I got over those and what I did wrong and how I corrected them throughout the video because you know I do keep all of my mistakes in the video so I can teach how to overcome come them in case you end up doing the same things. Let me show you some of the features of this bag. So as you can see, it's a great pattern for accenting um, accent to your accent fabrics, like any kind of fabric you want. It has this decorative overlay. It has a zipper pocket in the back. It opens up nice and flat. You have two slip pockets. This slip pocket here, you have another zipper pocket, six card slots and an ID window for a total of seven places for your cards. Um, materials I used in this bag. This silver is a pearl vinyl from Galaxy Customs. This glitter is a glitter vinyl from Galaxy Customs. Um, this, um, I think this is Sally fabric or vinyl. This was from um, Fantastic Customs. Uh, you can pre-order these sheets. This was just a sheet. It was. It's an awesome sheet buster if you end up having vinyl sheets you need to use up. Um, my zipper pulls are Lauren Marmino's Poison Apples. My zipper tape is from Blue Cala. Um, my magnetic snap is from Emmeline Beggs. My fabric, I don't remember. <laughs> Probably from Fabricland. Um, what else? What did I use for interfacing in this bag? In my flap, I use Decoville Heavy. Um, for my woven pieces, I used EB Fuse Light Woven Interfacing. Uh, in this pattern, Victoria calls for something called a, oh, what's it called? A hefty interfacing. That is not something that I have here in Canada. So instead of that hefty interfacing, I used a, a something, I used EB Fuse Medium, which is woven similar in density to say um, an 809 um, but I use the medium woven interfacing um, in the card slots I would recommend especially <laughs> if you are on a domestic machine uh, do not well that's a bonus to having a domestic machine do not interface your card slots I had to interface my card slots mainly because my machine is meant for medium to heavy fabric. So if I hadn't interfaced my card slots, my machine would have completely eaten my cotton pieces. So um, you'll see in this video, I use a uh, EB Fuse Medium, which is also similar to an 809, um, outside of the seam allowances of my card slots. What that did is when I went to turn that right side out, oh my gosh, it was it was hard, mainly because of the interfacing I put in. That was a brandy thing. That was not a pattern thing. But again, I had to interface those pieces because of using my industrial machines. So if you're on an industrial machine, especially if you're on a medium to heavy one, you'll definitely want to interface that so it doesn't eat your card slots. If you are on like an 1181, like a Juki 1181 or domestic or whatever, um, your machine does light um, fabrics as well. So you have you have the best of all worlds in that way. So um, what else? I feel like I'm forgetting something. Um, yeah, I think that is all the interfacings. Um, I also hear that the Hefty is just a little bit lighter than Decaville Light, so you could probably get away with using a Decaville Light or an EB Fuse Heavy. Um, I found that EB Fuse Medium worked just fine for that. Anyways, I think that's all I have to say about it for now. Let's get to making this bag. All right, so you are going to need some number five zipper tape, two number five zipper pulls, and a magnetic snap. Pieces wise, you're gonna need your wallet body, exterior and lining pieces, your decorative bands uh, mirrored to one another, your ID window parts, your 
your flat panels um, mirrored to one another. The lining side you have backed with uh, what I have is Decaville Heavy outside of the seam allowances. All of my cotton is uh, backed with EB Fuse Light. This is the card slot back. I have uh, EB Fuse Medium in the center of my card slot piece here. Side zipper pocket I have backed with EB Fuse Medium as well. Zipper pocket pieces backed with EB Fuse Light. All right, so we are going to make our flaps. So as you can see, they're mirrored to one another. We've cut them right. We're going to put a little bit of double-sided tape on the um, wrong side of the bands here. And then just match up the raw edges like so. And then we're going to top stitch this in place all the way around and you'll do the same yet opposite with the opposite side. Once that is done with both, we're going to take the lining side and we are going to install the male portion of our magnetic snap. So we're going to measure in four and a half inches, which is centered, and one inch up. And that is going to be where we put our male snap. Okay, now that's done. We have our lining side and our exterior mains here. Uh, make sure your flaps are positioned properly and go ahead and sew these together with a 3 8 of a seam allowance making sure your exterior flap is going with your exterior main and your lining flap is going with your lining main. Now we're going to want to top stitch the seam in place. We want the seam to be paint, uh, pointing and down towards the main body and top stitching through the body piece. You will repeat this exact same process with the lining panel. Okay, so let's work on our card slots. So you wanna mark the top, which is on the right hand side here, and then you're going to go by the me measurements that are in the pattern until you have 12 lines. Now, if you are on a domestic machine, I wouldn't recommend uh, interfacing this piece like I did. The only reason I did is because I am on an industrial, and if I had uninterfaced cotton, my machine would eat that cotton up. All right, so what we're gonna do is we have that where we have the top, we have that laying to the left. We're going to fold it wrong, wrong sides together, or right sides together um, on that first line, and give it a press, flip it over to the next line, making it right sides together, press, wrong sides together, press, et cetera, et cetera. I like to use a piece of cardstock like this when I kind of am going blind and I can't see where my line is. Just helps make it so you're, uh, it's not slipping and you know exactly what you're pressing. Whereas when you're on, you're pressing it right sides together, you can see the line, no problem. So continue this way, making sure your slots are all even and give it a good press. Once this is done, uh, make sure all of your card slots look somewhat even and straight. Give it a final press and then go ahead and measure this. It should measure nine inches tall, which mine does. I'm gonna make sure my card fits in all the slots vertically, which it does. Now we're gonna go ahead and top stitch all of those uh, pressed edges. So I've kind of folded the top edge back and out of the way. So the first edge is up top. Now bend that out of the way and do the next one and then fold the other ones to the back and do the next one and repeat until all of your pressed edges are top stitched.
right? Then fold all of those back up where they are, uh, originally wanted to be. And from the bottom, go ahead and baste the sides to hold the card slots in place. Just with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now we're going to work on the ID window. So on my vinyl piece, you can see my ID window. I actually uh, edge painted all around my raw edges so they're nice and pretty. Along the long sides of the wrong side of the ID window cutout, we're going to put a little bit of double-sided tapes. I'm keeping it at least an eighth of an inch away from where we will be top stitching around. So this is perfectly okay to do on a domestic machine if you can manage that. Then you're going to take your clear vinyl and you're going to stick it to that tape to hold it in place. And then we're going to go ahead and top stitch around that inner rectangle. Again, we had kept our tape outside of where we will be top stitching that eighth of an inch seam allowance. So if you are on a domestic machine, you should have no problems with this at all. Once that is done, we also want to top stitch along the top of one of the short ends. Just one. Now we want to take this and we want to align it with the stitching of our bottom folded uh, card slot and hold these in place with clips on the three sides. And then we're going to go ahead and baste those three sides together, keeping the top open. So down here, here, and here. All right, so now that's done, we're gonna take our card slot back. We are gonna line up one of the long sides here and clip it in place. Then go ahead and clip the other long side in place. You are going to see that this piece is bigger than our card slot piece, and that is exactly what we want because once we sew this together, this uh, the excess is going to form a border around our card slots. We're going to take this to the machine and we are going to stitch each of these sides with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then we are coming to what I found to be the hardest part of this wallet. And it was because I interfaced my card slots, which I really had no choice being on an industrial machine. I needed that interfacing. Um, but we're going to take this tube and we are going to turn it right side out. Now, the card slots usually wouldn't be interfaced like I did mine. I made it harder than I needed to, but... Again, because my machine is meant for medium to heavy, I couldn't just do cotton, so I had to back mine. Once you get it turned out like this, you can see how that uh, back panel made it so we have like a little border here. My card slots still fit, you wanna make sure. And then we are going to go ahead and we are just going to top stitch down the right side of this, not the left side, just the right side with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now we are going to work on our inside slip pocket with the zipper pocket. So you're going to fold this in half. So um, you're folding it four inches in. So it'll be four inches on top and nine inches long. Um, wrong size together for that side zipper pocket. And as well as you're going to fold a zipper pocket lining piece in half. From the fold of the zipper pocket lining piece, we're going to measure in three quarters of an inch from each side and from the fold a half inch up and then a three eighths of an inch line above that line there. 
Then we're going to fold it out and on this top corner or top side, the side that we drew the rectangle on, we're going to find that center with a little snip. And also on our uh, side pocket piece here, we are going to find the top center like so. Line up those snips. So our crease line should be going the same direction. And what we're creating here is a slip pocket that also has a zipper pocket attached to the slip pocket. Okay, we're going to go ahead and sew around this rectangle. Now from those stitching, uh, we're going to draw a line down the center of this, so a scant quarter of an inch. From the short ends of the, that rectangle, we're going to draw a little quarter of an inch line, and then of course do our little V cuts out. I'm going to take my rotary cutter and start my cutting here, and then go back in with my scissors, cutting into those Vs, getting as close as I possibly can to the stitching without cutting through the stitching. Once that is done, we are going to push the lining for the zipper pocket through to the back so these are now wrong sides together. Take it to the iron and give them a really, really nice press. Now that that's done, what we want to do is install our zipper now. So I'm going to take some double-sided tape here, making sure I'm at least an eighth of an inch away from where we will be top stitching. So again, if you can do that, you can definitely do this on your domestic machine. Um, we want our zipper pull to be going to the left with our piece orientated this way where the zipper rectangle is on the bottom. And go ahead, take one strip of the tape's paper backing off and line it up nice and centered on the zipper tape. Once you have that positioned where you want it to go, go ahead and do the other side. And then we're going to go ahead and top stitch this in place. Once again, if you had kept your tape um, more than an eighth of an inch away from where the rectangle is, you shouldn't be top stitching through it here and all should be well. Once that's done, we're going to fold it, the zipper pocket over like this, making sure it's going to the side that has the zipper pocket, not flip the other direction. And then we're going to sew shut just the zipper pocket lining piece. We're going to make sure we're not going through that slip pocket piece that we have just sewn it into. So kind of fold that part out of the way and only sew that zipper pocket lining piece. There we go, so that is done. I'm just gonna trim my seam allowances around here a little bit. You could also leave that open at the bottom, or not open, and uh, sew it shut, baste it with the bottom of this slip pocket, but I just want to reduce a little bit of the bulk there. Then you can go ahead and fold that side pocket piece in half and top stitch along that folded line, which makes the top of our slip pocket, and continue basting around the other three raw edges. And then that'll complete our side slip pocket slash zipper pocket, a two-in-one deal here. Okay, so now we are going to work on the same thing pretty much we're going to do here, but on the exterior of the bag, we're going to put our pocket. So you are going to go ahead and draw the rectangle the exact same way on that lining piece from that... Um, uh, seam where we attach the flap. We are going to put the ruler one inch down the crease I'm lining up with the half inch mark on my ruler which brings the uh, Rectangle opening to one inch below that crease I'm going to take some pins and just put them through that rectangle I'm not worried about the holes in my vinyl because we will be cutting this away. Make sure it is nice and centered 
as well as nice and straight. You can measure from the bottom like so and make sure you're nice and straight and go ahead and sew around that rectangle. So we're going to finish this the exact same way we did the other one where we're going to cut through this and push the wrong sides together like so. Go ahead and install your zipper tape in the same fashion with the pull going to the left and then fold the pocket over. Now make sure you leave the bottom of this pocket open for turning. I did accidentally sew it shut as you can see here and I had to pick that out later. Okay, so now for our magnetic snap placement for the female side, we want to measure up three inches from the bottom and four and a half inches from the side, nice and centered. Make a dot where that will go and go ahead and install your female side of your snap, backing it with a scrap piece of Decaville Heavy or Peltex or a heavy stabilizer of some sort. All right, so that's all done. I'm gonna put a little piece of Gorilla Tape over top of that. And now I wanna figure out where I wanna put my nameplate. So I'm gonna put it on the back. So I'm pretending that my thing is closing up here and I'm just gonna eyeball where I want to place this. Once I find a good spot, I'll go ahead and install it. Make sure you don't poke through your zipper pocket there, of course. And you kinda of get an idea what our exterior of our wallet is going to look like. Now to finish up our interior wallet. So you're going to take that slip pocket zipper pocket combo we made, line it up along the bottom of our lining piece. Now this piece is rectangle, rectangular where our bottom of our lining is rounded. So just match up all of these raw edges. When you flip it over, we're going to go ahead and we are going to trim these corners nice and even with that bottom lining panel. And then we can go ahead, take this to the machine, and we can baste this in place. Next, we're going to install our completed uh, card slots. So I'm taking my one inch ruler again, putting it right up against that slip pocket. And I am going to put some double sided tape on the side of the, the side of this card slot that is not top stitched. I'm keeping it away from the one eighth of the bottom because we're gonna to be top stitching through this as well. So keep enough room if you're on a domestic that you won't be sewing through that double sided tape. And you're gonna line this up right up against the ruler, nice and straight and matching up the raw edges as well. Hold those two short sides together with a few clips. And then we are going to baste down this side, top stitch across the long side and baste up the short side. Baste across here, not baste, sorry, top stitch across here and baste up the other short side. Now that this is done, we're gonna take these Again, make sure your exterior zipper pocket has an opening in the bottom. Put these right sides together. We're gonna to leave an opening in the bottom about this big for turning. Go ahead and match up all of your overlays so they will be nice and continuous. So that's where I like to start is the overlay right here in this corner. Then the overlay and the seam right here. I'm gonna match up here seam on the other side here and then go around the rest clipping it all around. Okay 
and now we're going to start and stop at those lines with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, leaving that bottom edge open between those lines. Take your picking shears and clip around the curves. Mine is super thick because I use glitter vinyl and two layers of vinyl. So around this flap, trim it down. Coco says hi everybody. She's got to at least once in a tutorial. And then around the other ones, not going too, too close to where our opening is. Once you have that done, you can go ahead and turn it through. Oh, also right here, I'm just trimming out some of the bulk within the seam allowances of the vinyls. It'll make it much easier when it comes to top stitching here momentarily. Go ahead and turn it through the opening in the bag. Once you have it turned through, keep your hand inside and push out all of the seams the best you can. Once I get it turned through here, push them all out nice and taut. Once you have that, you're going to now open up the zipper pocket, pull it out, reach in through that opening, grab the opening in the bottom of the wallet, pull it through. And then match up this raw edge and clip it in place. go ahead and sew the shut in between those marks with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance making sure we match up with the stitching where we stopped and stop started and stopped step that back in through that zipper pocket Reach in through the zipper pocket and push all of those seams out nice and tight. You want to have nice rounded edges here. So take the time to definitely press those out well. Once you have that, go ahead and turn the raw edges of your zipper pocket under and in. And then we are going to top stitch those folded edges to close up the zipper pocket. that zipper pocket in make sure it's in there nice and straight not bunched up at all and now that's all that's left to do is top stitching so because I have I'm using such thick materials I'm gonna go ahead and finger press all all these seams and hold them in place with clips and then we're gonna go ahead and we are going to top stitch all the way around this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance I have my hump jumper handy just in case I have a hard time getting over the two seams where the flap 
attaches. Um, where the flap attaches will be the area. If it's going to give you problems, it'll be right there. So you may want to have your humped jumper ready just in case. I did not need mine, but it's always good to have it there just in case. So go ahead and top stitch all the way around. Oh, I lied. I did use my hump jumper once. Then all that's left to do now is to make sure your snap lines up well, press it in place, and then we're done. All right, that's it, that's all. What did you think of that? It's a super cute wallet. It's a fun sew. Victoria also has, um, a sew along tutorial on how to make this on her channel. I will include that down below in the description if you want to subscribe to the Seems Legit channel. She's got some really um, awesome videos as well as she sells patterns. Obviously, I will be doing a couple more of her patterns, I'm sure, in the near future. Yeah. Anyways, if you like this video, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you would like to support my channel further, you can buy me a coffee. That link is down below. And make sure you check out on my front page the membership side of my channel, which is Sew Along Classes. We do a different bag every month, live, real time. And if that's something you're interested in, you can definitely join there. Otherwise, anyways, I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.